um, uh, I've come along with two of my colleagues tonight. Uh, one of those was just heckling me already. <laughs> um, Gordon and Tom. Um, we are um, we're all of the full-time employees from Beer Bods. We also work with a couple of part-time people. Um, so if you want to come and chat to us tonight about anything, Gordon's a short one in a yellow hat. Um, I can translate. He's from Doncaster. And, uh, and Tom, actually, oh, I definitely is translate. He's from Wolverhampton. Isn't he normally Evil Gordon? Yeah, Evil Gordon. So ask him why he's called Evil Gordon. If, um, if you struggle to hear me at any point, you just raise your hand and uh, I'll, I'll either talk up or grab the microphone. But then I can't hold my beer, so I prefer it if you didn't. <laughs> um, okay, so I'm going to talk about uh, starting beer bods, um, how how I did that, and also um, what I've learnt in the years since. Um, and I've been told I should do it in ten minutes. <laughs> I can guarantee it'll be longer than that, but hopefully not too much longer. So I suppose the story of beer bods really starts in a shed. Um, if I was in Silicon Valley, it'd be in a garage. If I was in a posh London suburb, it'd be at my kitchen table, but being from Worcestershire, it was in a, uh, a pretty basic garden shed. Um, and essentially, it was just a few friends uh, beer tasting. So um, I would take a few bottles of beer along, and I would hold a beer tasting for them. And funnily enough, um, as the beer was free, and there was quite a lot of it, the shed started getting busy. And um, I just thought, you know, what if... Um, what if the shed was the internet? What if this little club of people who were drinking these beers together was a bit bigger? And um, social media was taking off at the time. This was about 2010, 2011. Um, and, uh, and I also could see the rise of subscription services, you know, things like Love Film, uh, Coffee, Chocolate, Flowers, all these things in the post. Um, and I thought, you know, what if I could mash all of that into one and make a beer subscription service? So, so um, I had a pretty boring job. Um, I graduated uh, from university, and I right. I'll take you right back to where beer bud started. I told you this would be longer than ten minutes. So <laughs> I, I had my first sip of beer sat on my dad's lap at Pigeon Racing Club when I was about twelve years old. It was a, he was drinking Banks's Mild, and I fell in love, love with it immediately. Um, and I then spent all of my formative years uh, trying to find out about beer. This was way before the term craft beer was a, a, was a thing. Before even in, in this pub, you could get beers as good as this. And, um, and I was reading up about all sorts of uh, interesting beers coming from states over here. And um, so I was at university, I was thinking, and I finished that, and I thought, I've got to get a job that takes me back to beer again. So whilst we were doing these beer tastings in this shed, I put up uh, a one-page website, which was the extent of my development capabilities, that said, um, I've got this idea. It's for a beer club and subscription service. We'll send you 12 beers in the post every 12 weeks. Um, a bit of clever logistics will mean everybody drinks the same beer at the same time. That wasn't a cue, sorry. That <laughs> and, um, and yeah, and that, and that was it really, that was it. There's a, there a paragraph of text literally, and I said to myself, if I can get 100 people to sign up to this in a month, then I'll try and make a business of it. I suppose that was what the tech industry would call a minimum viable product. And um, so I then went to an event in West Wales, so this was 2012, um, spring of that year, and somebody came up to me in a, in a coffee break. It was, there were probably about this many people there actually, not many more, and he said to me, what do you do? And instead of telling him my boring graduate job, which was working in Martin for a phone and broadband company, I said, oh, I run this startup called Beer Bods. At that point, I had no warehouse. Um, I didn't really have a website. I just had a one-page thing telling people what I did. I had no stock. I had no investment. Um, I had no staff. I had a full-time job. I had nothing other than this one-page website and an idea. And he said, that's great. Where do I sign up? So I gave him, this, I gave him the website, and he signed up. He said, when do I get my first beers? And I said, oh, I don't know, a month or two? And he tweeted it. And he ended up being quite an influential chap. And I had 250 people sign up in 24 hours for a beer club that didn't exist yet. <laughs> so, so the next few months were quite crazy, but we launched in 2012, um, September 2012. Um, and in um, May the following year, whilst I still had a full-time job, we were, uh, we were named by Guardian as the number one Father's Day gift idea. We were 
named as one of the 100 most innovative small businesses in the UK. I still had a full-time job at this point. Uh, and then my wife got pregnant. So I had to <laughs> basically decide whether or not this was something I was going to do um, for a living. And it sounds like oh, I was going quite well. That was obvious. But when you've got a pretty secure, safe, well-paying job, it was still a diff and, and, and a pregnant wife, it was still a difficult decision to make. So, um, And also, I'd kind of run out of money twice. I'd, I'd spent about £10,000 in savings and other people's savings in starting this thing. I was burning through cash. The pro business had been profitable from day one, but I still had no money. And um, properly ran out of it twice to the point you know, where I'm calling around friends, seeing if they can put money, max out overdrafts. So I thought, you know, what am I going to do with this thing? So I decided to go out and get some investment. We had a number of uh, venture capital types trying to give us lots of money. Um, but I decided to do some crowdfunding. At that point, that was still quite new. But we, we did it with somebody called Crowdcube. And we raised, uh, at the time, we, we broke the world record for crowdfunding and raised £150,000 in 36 hours. Uh, so it gave away a bit of equity. And we've just been build, building steadily ever since. So uh, Gordon and Tom have joined the business. We're, we've got two dogs as well. Um, <laughs> and about 3,000 subscribers all over the UK. Um, and we're just growing really steadily. So I thought like, I'd try and reflect really on what it is that I've learned. Obviously, I've learned a lot, but I tried to pull out a few key learnings really for anybody who um, is working in a startup, wants to work in a startup, um, or I'm sure you could just pull these into whatever your job is anyway. So the first thing I want to talk about is uh, the big idea. So one of the most common questions I get is, you know, where did you come up with the idea for beer bods? And there was no light bulb moment. You know, I, what I'd say to people is that really all of the best ideas, ideas that I have uh, ever hear are lots of great small ideas just joined together well. So I suppose mine was, you know, the, the march of online communities and subscription services <coughs> and craft beer and then all of that coming together. And all of a sudden I had an idea. The second lesson is, uh, God, lesson sounds pompous, doesn't it? Sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> they were my lessons. They don't have to be lessons to you. Um, telling people your idea as if it already exists. So whether that's in your job or in your startup, the most valuable thing that I ever did was tell that one guy that I run a startup called Beerbods that wasn't even a startup then. People, you know, what I found is that when I did start Beerbods and it was... Um, you know, people will give you very honest feedback. They'll either sign up or they won't. When you tell somebody you've got an idea, when you do it tonight, I guarantee everybody will say it's great. You know, people, people are encouraging and they're nice, and they'll say, yeah, it's a great idea, and they'll get you to do it. But telling them it in the context of this is something that already exists and seeing what they do with it is far more powerful. For me, uh, crossing the start line was the hardest part. You know, stepping away from my job and uh, saying this is what I'm going to do full time Momentum's kind of taken it from there. So I just encourage you, any of you, if, 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 if it's something you want to do, starting is, is always the most difficult bit. Something that's really um, important to us is knowing what it is we're really selling. So yes, we send people beer in the post. And the obvious thing is we sell craft beer. But really what it is is we sell community. So every Thursday night, all of our subscribers all over the country come together to discuss beer, and that's actually what Beer Bods is built on. They, every Thursday, they get an email about that week's beer, the beer of the week, and we tell them a bit about it, whether it's tasting notes or about the people that make, made it, and actually, what it is we're selling there is learning, and of course, we're selling discovery, so we're introducing people to beers that they wouldn't have tried if it wasn't for us. We often joke that we send people beers they don't like guaranteed because if that's what it costs us to send you beer that you love that you wouldn't have had if it wasn't for us, then we'll take that trade any day. Um, work with the best. We're on an old pig farm in uh, Pinvin in Worcestershire. When Sarah came up to me after I'd spoken to do lectures in, in Wales and said, I grew up in Pinvin, I think you're the only person I've ever met. Who is me? Yeah. Um, oh, well, I love it. But yeah, that was so. Finding great people to come and work there is a is a real challenge. But we've done it, and you know, uh, Rob Draper's over in the corner is a great illustrated designer based in Worcester. You you've got to punch above your weight when you're trying to find great people to work with, uh, and this is great because you know finding r great, really talented people in the community of them is really tough, uh, particularly when you're not in London. I think so. 
just encourage you, whoever you're doing, work with people you can't afford to work with. Yeah, you know, we're it's easy for us. We bribed them with beer, but I'm sure you can find something <laughs> to buy. <laughs> I shouldn't have said that, Rob. Having no money was the best lesson Beerbod's ever had. Um, we have been profitable from day one. Uh, we've started um, making some fairly big investments, but as the business has run, it's actually profitable. And um, since Beerbod's was launched, we've had 15 beer subscription services launched in the UK. We were the first. Uh, we've had 15 since, so now we're one of 16. And um, some of them have started falling by the wayside already. Some of them have got big investment um, that they spend on marketing, whereas we're sitting here quite comfortably knowing that we're here for the long term because we've got a sustainable business model. And the reason we've got that is because we had no money from the beginning. So what I'd say to anybody starting out is, you know, don't feel like you have to get investment to build something. You know, strip it down to its core components. Launch with as small as you can and just build it from there really, you know, don't, don't build in the pressure of having other people's money from the outset. Um, so I've put here purpose, um, and I've got to try and remember what it was I wanted to say about that. Um, okay, people, yeah, there's a, great, there's a great online TED talk by a chap called Simon Sinek who says, people don't buy what you do, <coughs> yeah, people don't buy what you do, they buy why you do it. Um, we exist to get more people drinking better beer, all three of us are really passionate about great <coughs> beer and getting more people drinking it. And our customers know that, and that's what they really buy into. Like I said, there's loads of people selling <coughs> beer since we started doing it, but actually they know that we care about it, and that makes a real difference and means we'll be there for the long haul. Um, I'll finish, because I'm probably getting close to 10 minutes, or I'll pass it, yeah. So, um, <laughs> My last bit of advice is don't listen to advice. Um, <laughs> when you're starting something in particular, people yeah. quite rightly give you a lot of it, and customers, investors, friends, family, and it's all really, really valuable. You'll actually use about 1% of it, and the rest of it will be diluted in something that you'll find useful. But do things <coughs> on your own terms. Build the businesses that you want, you want to create, the career that you want to do. And, um, but hopefully there's something in there that's reasonably useful. Cheers. Uh.